Okay, uh, let's now go to plate buckling. Uh, because plate buckling is slightly different. For beam buckling, if something buckles, then it's final. While for plate buckling, that's not necessarily the case. What, what is plate buckling? It is a plate which is supported at four core at the four edges inside direction. Yeah, so it cannot buckle like what a beam buckles like, but it uh, um, uh, uh, it is fixed at the at the side walls. Yeah, so this so this so this buckling curve the curve is more or less the same, but only at the center and at the edge it will look look like this. Yeah, and then typically you get pictures like this in an FEA solution. That is this this representation uh, over the full uh, over the full mesh. Yeah, so this is compression, and if you have shear buckling, so I have a force here, and it's supported in that uh, at the sides, then this is the buckling shape. Yeah, so that you get these typ typically uh, deformation, which indicates shear buckling. How do we calculate this plate buckling instability? We can set up all the formulations. I'm not going to discuss the theory here, but uh, the idea is basically the same. If we go, if if we compare this with uh, uh, beam buckling, we have also we had the locust mode, which is from here till there, and then we have the the. Uh, the first mode, uh, the, the second mode, which is from here till there, and then if you see here, this one, the curve which is drawn here, is M is 3, and so the three buckling modes over the, uh, over the length and only one in the width direction. And if you calculate the buckling risk for these different modes, you will see something strange. Um, You can calculate the buckling risk for each of these modes. You will see that the Euler buckling, so the initial buckling curve, depends on, on some kind of stiffness factor. Then we have P, P squared, the E modulus again, uh, the thickness divided by uh, uh, the width of the plate squared, and we have here the Poisson ratio correction. correction. Yeah, but so the, the, the buckling curve, all, the, the buckling formula is almost the same. The only thing which is different is a K. And what is also nice to know, if you calculate the buckling risk for each of these uh, buckling modes, so for uh, the, the higher or the, for, the, for, the, for the sinus or higher order, you will find you come up to this curve. So depending on the length to width ratio, so if we have this, If this is A and that is B, so A divided by B, so if in this case this one is around, A is two times higher than B, so then we're around here, and what you will see is that the buckling value, the, the second buckling mode is the lowest buckling mode. If I have a B to A of 1, I have my buckling mode only at the lowest mode so what then I have only have one buckling mode like this so if I have a double I can so if it's two I will see that this line basically continues and then what is here at top here becomes a a, a lower displacement yeah and if I go to mode three you will see the same thing that the buckling mode is always still the same yeah four five well, let's continue. You can you can also see what the, what are these risks. Yeah, and so the effect is that that so if if you want to 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 recognize how uh, uh, a plate buckles, it tends to buckle in a square shape, and you also can see that the length of this uh, a plate. If I only have stress in that direction, is almost irrelevant. Yeah, because it's always around four. This k factor is always four unless the a is smaller than b. So if I have 
something like this or yeah so then I if I if it's off then I end up somewhere here yeah so if you if you have more than so if the length is longer than the width then the 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 length of the plate does not have any influence on the buckling uh, on the buckling factor yeah so that's completely different from a beam buckle buckling for a beam for a beam buckling uh, limit the length is crucial while for a plate buckling limit the width is cr crucial yeah so they, these things are are, are opposite so um if we if if we want to 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 make a column for example then um, the plate slenderness if you want to make a design you can say okay um, as a first estimate if we say look the we, if we if we want to avoid plate buckling risk oh if, if the, you have the plate buckling risk and you also have the yielding limit uh, they're both not final because after if, if we go back to this to this shape uh, sorry. if if the side buckles uh, if I make a very if the initial part buckles then in the middle I don't have any stiffness left but at the edges I still have some reserve capacity left yeah so for plate buckling the Euler buckling limit is not final while for beams it is a critical load uh, you cannot have uh, loads higher than the buckling limit while for a beam you can have elastic you can go over the initial elastic bus buckling limit yeah so since they are both yielding and plate buckling are both not directly uh, uh, crucial limits you can you can have some extra capacity above this limit we can say as a rule of thumb okay suppose I take I I set these buckling risk and the uh, yielding risk the same so I say well this what happens if we say the buckling the 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 uh, yield stress is the same as the buckling stress what happens then I can fill in this curve we already know that this K is 4 for uh, values above 1 so for uh, 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 a divided by B higher than 1 then we can determine if we have a plate that the a so the width which is B in this case the width divided by the thickness so which is which is here that can become if we, if we assume that curve then everything here is determined we have the yield stress here we have this stiffness factor which is 4 we have p squared we have the e modulus which is 210 gigapascal for uh, uh, steel and we have well 12 is a, is a fixed number and 1 divided Poisson ratio squared which is 0 0.3 if we calculate this then we see that the if the width is smaller than 56 times the thickness of the plate then yielding will occur before buckling but if I increase the yield limit then the buckling limit is still the same because the buckling limit you that you see that is only related to stiffness and not to stress yeah, so if I go to higher grade steels I to avoid buckling I need to have a lower limit so the width divided the width needs to be below 46 times the thickness yeah so this is a quick estimation so with that, if if I know the material, I can I, if I know the yield value, I can quickly calculate the allowable uh, width based on the thickness. Yeah, so this is a very quick method. Okay, will this thing buckle? Yes or no. Yeah, and and the other conclusion is if I use higher tensile steel, the relatively 
buckling the the, 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 the relatively buckling risk becomes more important uh, because I can allow higher stresses. Yeah. Okay. Um, up till now we only talked about uh, 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 simple supported construction. So SS that is simple supported, and um, we also make a difference between the edges. This this is an edge, and that is an edge, which is clamped or simple supported. Yeah. So the the thick line is the default line. And if we take simple supporters, so that is KC, that's the one we discussed, that is basically this curve. And you can see here this one is actually the same as the 4 and then K is 4. Yeah, but we can have also the effect of uh, uh, the boundary conditions. What happens if I can clamp both sides? And then I have end up with position A and I can see that I now have a buckling stiffness of 7. So I can almost double the buckling, uh, uh, the, 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 the buckling limit by assure, assuring that I have a stiff sides. Yeah, and on the other hand, what happens if I have, for example, a free edge? Yeah, so I, I have three sides, three sides simple supported. And uh, then I end up with curve E, which is over here. Yeah, and when does that happen? That, well, that basically that happens if I have something like this. Yeah, and if you go to the Eurocode limits or AIC limits, that, then they check the buckling of the flange, the buckling of the web, based on these simple assumptions. Yeah, so. Uh, by 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 uh, limiting the plate buckling and the beam buckling, you can already make quick designs. Yeah. So if we if we go if we make simple cases, so simple supported, the stiffness is k. If I have one edge simple supported and the other one not, I have 5.42. If I have both of them fixed, I end up with almost seven. If I have only one supported and the other one is free, I can end up at 0 0.45. So that is almost 10 times below the stiffness on both sides supported. Yeah, and if I have one time fixed and the other one is completely free, I still I have still have the effect of the uh, of the one clamped edge, which is then at, is of course of quite it is quite important. So instead of 0 0.4, I still have a three times higher stress. Yeah. So this is just, uh, as you can see, that for any plate longer than width, the buckling limit is easily determined by this k factor and the e modulus. Yeah. And and the material type. So um, we also have more. Buckling instability effects, of course, um, uh, uh, but basically the effect of the boundary conditions. Uh, if I have a shape like this, uh, this side, if if you if this plate is very thick compared, so if the bottom plate is thick compared to the web plate, this you can consider as uh, uh, a clamped. And more clamped than simple supported. While here, if you make this really thin, this becomes even. It, and if this, especially if this becomes very long, the side stiffness here over this, over the plate here, becomes so small that this is not even simple supported, but becomes free. Yeah. So even in a stiffener, you can see these different. Uh, 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 type of plate buckling effects besides the the standard complete buckling if, if, if the beam if the stiffener buckles as a beam then I just have the I have again the slenderness of my beam uh, which indicates whether uh, you have uh, um, you can get uh, Euler buckling or yielding first.
Yeah, so depending on, uh, 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 on the stiffness and in the formulation of this plate buckling, you can get different uh, limits. And you can see here the minimus, minimus 4 and you can go up to almost 7. It's basically the same as uh, um, uh, with plates only. Okay, um, then the uh, next thing, so we were now talking only about this situation where we have compression in one direction. What happens if we have uh, buckling also in the other direction? Or if we have this one buckling in the other direction and also shear? Yeah? Or if all of these can vary? Yeah, so I have a variation in stress here, I have a variation in stress there, and also, so I have a variation over, uh, over the length or over the width of the plate, and I also have shear. Um, this is a typical picture you will always see with all plate buckling standards. Uh, so you have the different, the, the different effects, so you have a variation of stress over the sides, on both, on both edges, and shear and also uh, 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 um, and you have here a, a, a panel so plates with stiffeners if necessary um, and this S is the distance between the plates uh, keep in mind that this curve this is a simplification because if I if this stress on this side is the same as that on that side then the shear stress can only be zero or in other words if I have shear stress the stress on this direction needs to be smaller than, than on that because the effect of the shear increases this stress if the shear is in this direction that increases the value there and decreases it here yeah so this is an an idealization of the stress situation but keep in mind that this 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 situation cannot exist yeah, because uh, if you if you don't have shear, this picture, this stress situation can exist. But if you have shear, both sides need to have a di different stress pattern. Okay. Um, uh, in order to make a uh, 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 calculation simple, we have for uh, um, buckling rigs in one direction we can use 4 for values where the A is higher than 1 and this is the exact value for if, it, if it's lower yeah so that there you can that, so in, with this for with these two you can basically you have either 4 as K and if it's smaller then it, it, it goes up with the same curve as, as we have shown before. So uh, we can calculate the buckling risk in this direction and in that direction. We can also separately calculate the shear uh, risk, which is according to this formula. So that is only shear. Yeah, and then there and that direction. So basically what you do in a standard, you calculate the buckling risk in each direction separately. Yeah, these two are, if you have uh, pure in plane bending, so that is this situation. I have here compression and I have tension here. Yeah, since only half of the plate is in compression and the other one is not, then the the, 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 the the plate height can be much higher before you can start to have buckling. Yeah, but the idea is, okay, if we calculate these uh, plate stiffnesses in the different directions, in different, uh, it, uh, separately, and then combine it in some kind of uh, uh, combined buckling risk formula, that determines how, uh, whether a plate in the end buckles or not. Yeah, so you have these individual results we have compression or compression and shear, shear and um, uh, the, the combination determines whether it buckles or not yeah, so if I have only compression in all direction and shear 
I have sigma 1 and sigma 2 critical and that looks like more or less a circle. And if I have only stress in one direction and tau critical, I also have something which looks like a circle. So if we want to combine all this, this is the simple load combination factor where this this new factors these are the safety factors so, and this is sigma cx that is the critical buckling direction in the x direction this is the critical buckling in y direction so the safety factor there is always the same so the buckling risk in one direction squared at and taking into account the safety factor plus the one in the other direction plus the one in shear they all summed up together needs to be below one yeah so this is a kind of in the end the same approach as you have in uh, in the Euler buckling stress yeah you you sum up the stresses the situations in the three directions and then you come up with some kind of equivalent buckling load yeah in, instead of an equivalent uh, uh, stress so in the end, the approach is not that different. Yeah, and this is the, this is the what happens if you have if you go over the initial buckling limit. If here in the end it buckles, I can have here an effective width where I can go up to the yield limit before it fails. Yeah, and and that is the will I, I won't discuss it in here, but that is the ultimate uh, buckling limit yeah so if uh, 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 that takes into account that you have initial buckling in the center but the at the edges you can still increase stress because uh, it has not reached the yield or not reached the ultimate if you want to go even further than that okay that's all nice but uh, what do we what does that mean in practice if we need to design something like this Suppose we have a column and we need to define how many stiffeners do we need to use and how big needs to be the di distance between the, sec the sections. Yeah, so we already uh, saw, we, we take this curve again and then we see two things. So if we have the plate limit, so simple supported plate, so that, that is for example this one here. Then we see, oh, sorry, my drawing is not that good. I'll retry. It's this one here. Yeah, so if, if that one, well, that, that one is determined by the width and a k factor of 4. And if I have, for example, this plate, which is as one free edge, then the, the, this width divided by the thickness is determined by the free edge length. Yeah? Uh, we can of course continue to use calculating these risks, but it's much easier to come up with rules of thumb. Yeah? So if we have the plate slenderness, we already estimated that before. If we, depending on the yield stress, I need to have uh, the width divided, it needs to be then 56 times the thickness if you want to, uh, if you want to take a, a simple number you take 50 so below if the the width is uh, smaller than 50 times the thickness you will you won't get buckling if you have mild steel if you go to higher grade steel so s355 it needs to be the width needs to be below 40 times the thickness yeah so this is a very quick rule of thumb yeah, so you, you can design a column like this without going into calculating any stress. You just use this rule of thumb geometry rule. Okay. Um, so, and how, how do we get that? Just a reiter uh, we set the Euler buckling limit the same as the yield stress. And then these becomes the limit. If you want to be slightly lower, you use 50 and 40 instead of 56 and 46. Um, for free edges, yeah. So if I have 
uh, uh, a, a column like this or if I have a plate with stiffeners then this is the length or if I have a stiffener here then this is my width I it as, as soon as I have a free edge so a non supported thing then we can do basically the same calculation but then the buckling stiffness is not 4 anymore but that is 0 0.25 and then you run into the calculation that the thickness uh, the, the width needs to be smaller than 15 uh, than 80 times the thickness if you have mild steel and lower than 15 times the thickness if you have S355 yeah, and you can see that this is this comes from the uh, Eurocode limit and they they classify profiles in the same way if you have the C divided by T I think below I think this 15 is uh, this 18 turns to be 15 or, or, or 13. Uh, if that's below, then you suppose then you, then you suppose you can develop a complete plastic. It the, that plate can become complete plastic and does not buckle. Yeah. So uh, 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 the, the 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 full capacity of the plate can, is determined only by the yield stress. And if that the the, the C divided by T is bigger than this 18. I cannot. I, I will it, it, in my in 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 uh, 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 if this beam supports something, it will buckle first before it reaches yield. So you are you end up in a lower category. Yeah. So uh, for for a uh, 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 Eurocode, you have four different limits. The first one is the full profile can be complete can become completely plastic, and then it fails. So I have I can calculate with the full plastic limit. I have second uh, uh, the second group where I can reach some plasticity, but uh, uh, I can at, at certain points, but not everywhere. So it is partially plastic. The third one is okay. I cannot calculate with the plastic limit, but I can even, but I can at least calculate with the complete elastic limit. So the yield stress limit over the profile is uh, so I can at least reach everywhere yielding before you get buckling problems. And then you have the fourth category where buckling of any of these plate uh, 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 somewhere in in the profile occurs before uh, uh, somewhere in the uh, uh, in 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 the profile you have already developed a, um, uh, a an, an, an elastic stress yeah so buckling is then more determined than uh, um, uh, than the elastic limit yeah so in this way you 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 take into account uh, uh, the the plate buckling limits into a beam buckling uh, an overall beam buckling estimation. Yeah? Okay. So and again, so the the, the it, it, if if but for for design of a single profile, you basically have the same thing. You the estimation of the free edge width needs to stay at least below these numbers okay and what if we want to go to a stiffener buckling um, then we can see that basically depending on on the width of uh, 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 of the plate yeah, and that is determined by the limit bef before this if, if we have a, a, a bending moment over the full plate the if, if sorry, if I if we have over the stiffen over the stiffened plates a unified uh, a compression stress, the maximum effective width is limited by uh, the, the 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 length at where the 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 plate between the stiffeners will buckle by himself. So that is the same limit as what as what we had had before so depending on the type of uh, uh, 
of material, this limit can be 56 for S235, so 56 times the thickness uh, for S235 and for S S355 that can be for needs to be 46 times the thickness so that the maximum width before it starts to buckle so the effective width that is BM that is half of that plate of course because that BM uh, half of your plate is part of the uh, of the next stiffener and then this profile altogether that is again a beam which can buckle over the uh, over its neutral axis in line with the plate yeah so if you want if, if you have a plate if, if you have a beam buckling results you can you can check if, if you need to uh, if you need to know okay uh, what what is my so we, we determined with this with this uh, with these rules of thumbs the the thicknesses between the uh, uh, the width between the profiles uh, with the stiffener buckling that is determined so if I have a plate like this with a stiffener there Yeah, so the the stiffener plus plate together they act as a beam. So then the length of the beam, uh, uh, so the 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 the, the length the, the between the section determines whether you a, a stiffener buckles yes or no. So for that we need to take into to go back to the beam buckling curve. Yeah, so if we if we for example have here. In beam stresses, the maximum compression stress, which is here 122, that is over here. And if we want to calculate it, I think in this example it's between these two. So that then I have for the different load situation, I can get my minimum compression or the maximum compression stress or the minimum normal stress in, in the beam direction. If I know that one, I can determine, okay, what needs to be the length between the sections and the stiffeners. Yeah, because I go back to this uh, uh, buckling curve we discussed before, and then I can see, okay, this is the situation. If I have slendernesses below 10, and here I have the different curves for different materials, and here I have always buckling the always the buckling limit um, so the lambda is the length of the stiffener divided by the radius of duration uh, I can read this thing also the other way around if I have a stress of let's say 120 I I can I can determine what can be the section difference but just by looking at this curve I can see here what is my allowable stress at the top of my of my, of my total beam before I get uh, um, uh, 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 I will get stiffener buckling or in other words if my maximum compression stress for loped combination one is uh, uh, 120 and I have a material FA360 which is S235 the, they, they use old, old names but the idea is the same that means that I have an lambda of around 56 and if I increase my material uh, uh, quality I can go up to a lambda of, of 88 yeah, so if you if you look at this curve now, you can see that this is an this is curve is made for a designer. Basically, he does not need to calculate the buckling risk as long as the slenderness of the plate plus stiffener together is below 56 for S235 
or for S55 below 88, then I'm fine. Yeah, and um, uh, uh, how, what, how uh, to give an estimate? Okay, what, what is this ratio of duration? I go to the to the next sheet. So, ratio of duration again is the average material distance to the neutral line. So, if I I have an infinitely thin web plate here, then this is the average ratio of duration. If I have a full square. My ratio of duration is 29 millimeters, which is up till here. Yeah, so that is a little more than than a, a quarter of the height. And if I have a circle, it is exactly a quarter of the diameter. Yeah, so you can see. Um, the more material I have relatively outward, the higher the ratio of duration divided by the height is. Yeah? At best, it is the height divided by 2. And at worst, here you have a, 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 a round shape. There um, uh, you have the ratio of duration which is only a quarter of the height yeah yeah and so if you if you build up an uh, an excel sheet uh, which i did for my students then i can if i calculate the plate thickness here the plate thickness there and the plate thickness there out of these i can calculate an moment of inertia an area, the radio, a, radi a radius of duration, and if I have the required lambda, which comes from this curve here, I can set the length, the 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 required uh, length between uh, the, the required stiffener buckling length before buckling start of a stiffener. Yeah, so this is this is the a simple design approach to both plate buckling and beam buckling. And, and, uh, and this was uh, for design with the course design of with finite elements or how to use the FEA results and your uh, standards in the design phase. Yeah, so this is a, a, a practical approach. How do we avoid plate buckling or beam buckling? Are there any questions on this? Does this help? Are you still there? Yeah, I think everybody is still here. But okay. Yeah, no questions. Yeah, is this clear or? Uh, the theoretical this background. The theoretical background is is clear, but uh, how to use this on practice, especially with is this verifiers? It's the question is so basically what you do is for for beam buckling you take for so for for Eurocode and AIC you take into account these things internally within the in the code and if you have a, a plate buckling you have this effect yeah basically we always take we assume simple supported because that is what is the limit of STC verifier yeah, so you calculate the risk in one direction of the plate, you calculate it in the other direction of the plate, you calculate it in the shear direction, and you have this summation. And uh, where's this? So this summation curve here. Yeah, basically the only difference is sometimes to make this times four, for example. But the idea is the same. Yeah, so um, uh, the the buckling risk is based on simple equations. Okay. Yeah, so what is good to know is that if I make this thing longer, I will I will not get and I will not run into problem 
as long as I, this the, the the buckling load on the side is low yeah so for beams the width if I if I have a buckling wrist I need to change the width and not the length but what do you mean uh, by the width in, in this case for example if I have a, if so I've, if the stress is uh, you need is to the figure stress out in this out. direction yeah then it doesn't matter if, if I want to reduce the buckling risk changing the length does not make any change so if mm -hmm. I add supports in this this way that's not going to help me I need to apply it in that direction okay. so if I have a plate with which is which buckles I need to check okay what is the determining stress direction in the length or in the width so if it's in the length I can always increase of course the thickness yeah so uh, the thickness if we go to this one uh, here if I double my plate thickness I reduce I I reduce with a factor four my buckling risk yeah so if my buckling risk is a uh, suppose yeah I have this curve so if I have in one direction a value of 1.2 uh, wait a, a nice number um, uh, a factor 2 I need to increase so if this is a factor 2 I need to increase my plate thickness with the square root of 2 yeah or the width I need to reduce with a square root of 2 it's the same thing yeah and if they're both more or less the same then then or I need to so if I have a plate where, where, where this one is at the limit and that one as well um, then it's more effective to increase the plate thickness okay and yeah. by uh, another effect is so if you want to say okay is this really realistic the boundary conditions we always take into account simple supported but it can be much less it can be much better uh, if this one is clamped so if I have a very thick plate on a, on a thin one then this thick plate is more like a clamped situation than a simple supported so you can there is some space upward you see in stiffness so from 4 to 7 so you can gain maximum 70 percent to have it fully clamped Yeah, so the most important if you do a plate buckling analysis basically what you do you calculate the buckling risk based on the on the geometry items based on the length and width or a and b yeah you calculate the buckling risk in that direction and in that direction and then you summarize all these buckling risk with this simple combination formula you can also see why it's so important to recognize the plate widths the plate widths and heights correctly because uh, they determine everything But, uh, Walter, if, if I understand correct, it's the, 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 the length of the plate is used only for calculation of K-factor, that's it? The length of the plate is 
uh, no, you have basically, if you look at the curve, the curve we use, which all every standard use, says, is this. We use always C, simple supported. Sometimes you have these correction factors if you are near an edge, so then you can go up versus clamped. Mm -hmm. So that is this extra correction factor. So you have four up till one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you take this curve here. Okay. Yeah, so instead of calculating the buckling risk for each of these different, this is the only one which matters. Okay. Yeah, and that also explains why we need to calculate the stress in the right direction. Mm-hmm. 